South Saskatchewan River winds its way through what is now the city of Saskatoon. It is a constant reminder, a moving thread of memory through a living heritage. From pristine prairie to a robust modern community, Broadway Avenue has many stories, and who better to share its history than City of Saskatoon archivist Jeff O'Brien. If you're looking into Nutana, you're looking down what's now Broadway, but before the, the colony was built, this is the old Moose Woods Trail. It goes from the Moose Woods, from the White Cap First Nation, all the way up through the university and up to Batoche. So this has been a highway for people in this part of the world for an awfully long time. Now if you were on the north side of the river looking into Nutana, the view is a little bit different. This is the high side of the bank, of course, and it's always been heavily bush. You know, when you come along the river here uh, through this, the park here, Cosmopolitan Park, it looks an awful lot like the river bank looked when the first settlers came here or when the First Nations people came through here back in the day. The early colonists here were, were quite new to this area and, and to making a, a livelihood far out on the prairies. Remember, in 1883, Saskatoon is as, as isolated as, as it is possible to imagine a place to be. And and so having this, this well-established community south of us on the river, full of people who knew how to live and to make a living out of this kind of land was critically important for the people of Saskatoon. Saskatoon, the early Saskatoon, had a, 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 a quite an active relationship with the people who lived at White Cap uh, in, the, uh, in the very early days, of course. One of the problems here was that manpower was uh, at a premium. And you know, farming in those days was highly labor intensive and the white cap people provided an excellent source of reliable source of, uh, of short term workers, especially for the harvest. And for the, the people living in white cap, Saskatoon was a great source of income, of goods and money, which they got for doing wage labor. Prior to the establishment of Saskatoon, white cap people would go up to Prince Albert to work the harvest. So once Saskatoon came along, it was much easier. The relationship worked in a lot of ways for both, both sides. When the original temperance colony uh, was laid out in the summer of 1883 when they surveyed it, it was essentially Nutana um, and with Broadway running right up the middle of it. And of course, there's no bridge, right? There's a bridge over there nowadays. Well, that, that wasn't there back in the 1880s. Um, the, uh, the riverbank would have been pretty empty, no city in the background. Uh, originally, of course, Saskatoon was just on this side of the river, so if you looked across, it's just tall grass and gophers all the way to the horizon. People will sometimes wonder, why is a sleepy little residential street like Main Street called Main Street? Well, the reason is because the reason why Saskatoon is where it is in this precise location is because the original colonists need to find a place where the riverbank was low enough on both sides to allow for a road to be cut down to the river so they could build a ferry across because it's 1883 there's no there's no roads there's no railways there's no nothing here so you need to get across the river you're gonna need a ferry crossing well so John Lake the father of Saskatoon heads down talks to Chief White Cap down at the White Cap First Nation about geography and the decision is that the geographical setting they want is right here right on this particular bend of the river and so in the very first uh, uh, survey plan of Saskatoon drawn in the summer of 1883. You can see Main Street cutting across Broadway all the way down to the river and a little arrow says two ferry crossing. So next time you're walking down Main Street, that's why. The intention was always that this be the commercial strip, right? This is, this is uh, Nutana's main drag. And, uh, and before, before there was a Saskatoon across the river, before the 1890s, this was all that all they had going. Now, uh, so there was always going to be some kind of commercial development along here. The very first stores, uh, Grace Fletcher's store and Willoughby's store, you know, actually in the early years, the first retail establishments on Broadway were in tents. Uh, it's a little bit different from today. We don't normally, uh, except for during the festivals, sell things out of tents. As the neighborhood grew, as Saskatoon grew, Broadway became the retail area for the south part of Saskatoon and for the, uh, the, uh, the rural area south of Saskatoon. Uh, people from as far away as Whitecap First Nation came up to Saskatoon to shop and when they did, they came to Broadway just because it was closer and it was easier. The Broadway Bridge wasn't built until 1932.
Don Bailey knows the Broadway area well. The longtime Saskatoon resident spent his youth on Broadway and he knows the street. I'm 82 now, but I started my life uh, about three blocks from here on uh, Broadway and 9th Street. So uh, as a kid, I had to walk down Broadway four times a day, going to school, coming home at lunch, going back, and so to Victoria School, the old Victoria School. So I was there for eight years. So those days, I, I had to walk Broadway every day. So I, I knew all about Broadway. That was, that was our stamping ground. So this is Victoria School. Spent a lot of time there. I could tell you all the teachers I had. Now this was my route to Victoria. So I can remember all the old stores that are no more. Uh, the bank and the, the uh, drugstore was Stewart's Drugstore. There was a hardware store, Reader's Hardware. And uh, the big place was the Red Robin Cafe, which is pretty much not far from where the Broadway Cafe is right now. One of the buildings uh, on Broadway where the, uh, you know, the Crafts Council? Mm -hmm. Well, that was the old bank. That was the old Royal Bank in there. And I'm glad they preserved that. Where we were situated, the old house, was uh, the property on Broadway, that whole block on Broadway, was St. Joseph's, St. Joseph's Parish. And across the kitty corner across was the school, which is uh, Oskayak now, but was St. Joseph's School. So my recollections of uh, those years was I had, I, here's a Protestant kid, had to navigate my way through uh, through St. Joe's School to get to Victoria. It's funny to talk this way now, but it was, it was, uh, there was a split, really. Now it's, you know, it's just nothing now, but when I was a kid. Much like the early days of this century, Saskatoon lived through an economic upturn, and construction on Broadway was booming. When Saskatoon boomed in the years just before the First World War, they built a lot of uh, the uh, buildings you see here today. The building that has buds on it was built about that time. The old Farnham block, which was torn down a little while ago, uh, things like that. A lot of the apartments um, up and down Broadway are creatures of that era, 1909 to 1912. I feel uh, somewhat sad, but we just lost the Farnham block. <laughs> within the last uh, six months. So that's a parking lot now. It reminds you of Joni Mitchell. And this old building, built in uh, 12, I think, is gone, which is sad. I, uh, you know, I, I don't think we treasure our heritage as much as we should, really. And that's a classic example of it. So, rumor has it that the famous Joni Mitchell had her start right here behind me in the Smith Block in a place called the Louis Real Coffee House in about 1964. From Saskatchewan, Saskatoon naturally, comes this very lovely young lady who writes her own songs, songs like Born to Take the Highway, Joni Anderson. See the stretching sun at dawn and wipe the stardust from his eyes. Feel the Some people will tell you that Joni used to play Lydia's in the Farnham block, but this is not true. She got her start right here behind us in the Louis Riel. Of course, if you want absolute fact, why, why don't we just ask Joni?
Broadway is the heart of, uh, of Temperance Town, right? The old Temperance Colony settlement. And the wonderful, delicious irony of it is that if you walk this stretch of Broadway today, you cannot spit without hitting, you know, some kind of licensed establishment. So I sometimes think that the ghosts of the temperance colonists must sit up there and look down and, and pick their teeth and grumble at the, at the way Broadway has changed over the years. Here we are in front of probably Broadway's most iconic location, Buds on Broadway. And the building itself goes back to the great boom built in at the height of Saskatoon's pre-First World War real estate boom in 1912. Uh, and, uh, and it was built as, uh, well, actually a lot like it is now. Uh, it was uh, apartments above and retail below. And actually, it seems to me that they might have been early uh, Catholic church services in this particular building. Anyway, nowadays, there's all sorts of stuff in here. There's uh, um, the, uh, the craft council is here, in here. The Broadway bid has its offices. And of course, Bud's, home of the blues in Saskatoon. Behind me, we have yet another Broadway icon, the famous Broadway theater, first built in 1946. And you know, back in those days, all the theaters in Saskatoon were downtown. Much, much later, we ended up with, uh, uh, with uh, suburban theaters like Duffy's on 8th Street. But before them, we had the Broadway theater. Yay! Now, the Broadway theater was a, a, a fine place. It's you know, set up for live performance. They run movies and stuff. For a little while in the 1970s, kind of fell on hard time. It was the, the home of adult movies here in Saskatoon. But uh, a local group, the Friends of the Broadway, picked it up and dusted it off. And nowadays, the Broadway is one of the greatest places to see a performance in all of Saskatoon. Don Bailey remembers going to church in the Broadway theater. But mostly, he recalls his family home as part of the Broadway neighborhood. There is my old house. When I was a boy, the, that whole corner were tennis courts, clay courts that had to be dragged. And they had to get water from my dad. I'll show you exactly where they drew it. I want to see if the faucet's still here. This was, there it is. That's how we, <laughs> that's how we watered the tennis courts. If you look around Saskatoon, especially uh, Nutana, I'll bet you'll see 50 houses, just like it. They were all built by Gary's father, Shulquist Construction. In many ways, uh, Broadway has retained its sort of unique character, really, I think. We didn't recognize it as unique in those days, but now I do. And, uh, and it's sort of trendy. It's a good place. From indigenous prairie trail to a bustling commercial strip, Broadway has retained its unique cultural and heritage footprint. Trendy shops and eateries interspersed with physical reminders of the past, significant cultural anchors, and a healthy nightlife make up the unique Broadway area of Saskatoon. And it is constantly evolving. New stories spring to life, coexisting with the old ones, forever feeding the living heritage that is Saskatoon's Broadway Avenue. Winter of 1888, a fellow named Ted Mears was at a party down on Broadway at about 10th, and uh, it was a blizzard came up, and he was worried about his cows in his barn on the other side of Broadway, about 100 yards away. So he left the party, went out on Broadway, promptly got lost. They found him a few days later, five miles away, frozen solid. So he got lost on Broadway. Just gives you an idea of just how much there wasn't here on Broadway back in the day.